My name is Pastor Marlon Curtin. This is the Rockway Cathedral. Uh, welcome, welcome to our Sunday service. Welcome to our Sunday service. If you like what you see here, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Our foundational scripture is Matthew 7, verses 24 and 25. Matthew 7, verses 24 and 25. We at the Rockway Cathedral say we're building God's kingdom in you. Be blessed. It's May 21st, 2023. Welcome to online worship at the Rockaway Cathedral. We are so glad that you have chosen to be with us this morning. Whether you're just having a look or seeking a place to worship, we are delighted to have you here. And though we may not be able to meet together physically, that is not going to stop us from rallying together spiritually. Join us online for a time of worship and a message from Pastor Marlon Curtin. Join us in experiencing the joy of singing to the Lord with the gospel duo, Melody and Harmony. praise we bring god of creation you didn't spare a thing justified glorified are you magnify the earth will honor you purify to me that's what you do amplify this praise is all Allow for you me to be a vessel for you making sure your love always shines through like a beacon of a light through the trial Sing show so all may know. I'm gonna tell the world all about you. Try you, God, Father, Son, and Spirit, too. Glorious, gracious God, awesome in all your ways. The rock in whom my faith will remain. I want to serve you. All of my days, and I want to please you in every way. All the choices I make, oh, every step that I take should be directed by you. So I'll wait. Whoa, oh, oh. on you cause you're the only one who's faithful and true Jehovah Jireh my provider I will rely on you to see me through I want to serve you all of my days and I want to please you in every way all the choices I make, oh, every step that I take should be directed by you, Jehovah Jireh. I want to serve you all of my days, and I want to please you. I want to please you. All the choices I make, oh, every step that I take 
should be directed by you. So I wait. Join us on Tuesdays for our weekly Bible study series, Purpose. Meet with us from 7.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. on Zoom, meeting ID 960-2462-6792. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Lord, you said that the cattle of a thousand hills belong to you. You said that the cattle of a thousand hills belong to you. Pray, Lord, for the body of Christ. Pray, Lord, that you meet all of their financial needs. Lord, there are many people who are struggling financially. Many people who don't have what they need. Many people who are just getting by. And I pray, Lord, that those that have short-term financial needs, that you meet their needs. Those that have long-term financial needs, meet their needs. Those that need, need jobs, Show them the way or their steps. Those that need to improve on their business, give them the wisdom and the resources that need to be done for that. Those that have suffering from catastrophic illnesses and they're having trouble with that situation financially, give them the resources, give them the help that they need. Lord, we know that you are the one who could meet our needs financially. You're the one who could meet our needs financially. I pray that you meet the needs of those who are in the body of Christ whether it's individual, whether it's company, whether it's family. Meet the financial needs of the body of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's scripture of the day is taken from Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20 in the King James Version. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. The Rockaway Cathedral is a nonprofit organization that is seeking to win souls for the Lord in the Far Rockaway community. We especially want to make a difference in the lives of those who are often disenfranchised. However, we need your support to get there. Your act of kindness can be a lifesaver for someone. Remember, richness is not necessary, but willingness is. Please visit our website at www.therockawaycathedral.com. Click on the blue Donate tab at the bottom of the page, then click Make a Donation. We are also asking that you continue to support us by viewing our service once a week. We're now on Cash App. You can send your donations to Cash Tag Rockaway Cathedral. We thank you for your partnership and continued support. Good morning, good morning. God bless you. Welcome to Rockwood Cathedral. My name is Pastor Mark. So today's message is called Here We Go. Today's message is called Here We Go. It's about the Great Commission. So remember we talked about before, um, you know, loving thy neighbor, meeting the needs of a stranger, meeting the needs of those that are close to you, meeting the needs of a stranger, meeting the needs of those that are close to you. I just want to give you the other side of that. You know, in the book of Acts, you know, that's really detail, details the birth of the church and some of the things that were going on in the early church. And one of the things that happened was all the needs of the people of the community were met. You know, they said that sometimes people donated this and donated that to help people, those who were in need. And in the process of everybody meeting other people's needs, their needs were met. 
in the process of meeting other people's needs, their needs are met. So yes, loving thy, loving thy neighbor means that you, where possible, meet the needs of total strangers if you have the opportunity to do so. It also means being willing to lay down your life for your brother, those that invite of Christ, those are your, your good friends, being able to lay down your life for your friend, it means that as well. But in the book of Acts, it shows us that if you're willing to lend and give to strangers, if you're willing to lend and give to your brother, that in the community of faith, the Lord will prompt somebody else's heart to meet your needs. That's that's ultimately the way, that's ultimately the way that our needs get met. It gets met within the context of the faith community. So even as we reach out to others, reach out to people outside of the faith, reach out to people inside the faith, those in the faith reach out to us. So so um, so today's message is called Here We Go as part of the Great Commission. Today is a one-off message, not part of a series, but today's message is called Here We Go. It's really talking about the Great Commission. Be blessed. Join us as we welcome the gospel duo Melody and Harmony. Okay, welcome. Good morning. Welcome to Rockwood Cathedral. Today's message is called Here We Go. Today's message is called Here We Go. 
scripture could be found in Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. Matthew 28, verses 18, 18 through 20. I'm going to be reading from the King James Version of the Bible. Please stand for the reading of God's holy word. Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. Today's message is called, Here We Go. It began at the reading of God's holy word. And Jesus came and spake unto them and saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So far the scripture. Lord, speak through your servant today and bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen. So many years ago, you know, I was in college. And, uh, you know, you meet lots of people, lots of different people, lots of all sorts of people. So I remember I uh, went to school in Pennsylvania and uh, went to college in Pennsylvania, lived in New York. And somehow I was driving from, from campus to somewhere. I'm not sure if I was going to New York, going somewhere. I don't know. I was going somewhere, somewhere away from campus. And I had a friend of mine who I knew. And he brought a woman who I didn't know and her son. And I, again, I don't remember where we were going in New Jersey, D.C. I don't know where we were going. So, but I do remember this. The kid uh, must have been a teenager. He had like a, back in those days, people used to have these boom boxes uh, to carry around, a portable radio called the boom boxes. And he had a cassette player. He only had one, only had one cassette. And the cassette only had one song. And it was a song by Run DMC, a rap group called Run DMC, a group from Hollis, Queens. Of course, they had made many albums at the time. But this was like, it was 1983. It was when, they, when this song came out, it was called Here We Go. I don't know when this trip was or when we were taking this trip, but it was certainly after 1983. He plays the song. We're not going to play it now. You could go on YouTube. In fact, go on YouTube now. With not with this device. When you're with the other device. By the way, this is not for children. Go on YouTube now. Go on your other device. And play the song if you want. It's a very short song. But the bottom line is it goes, you know, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we, here we, here we go. And then it would go on and on and on. So... You know, I think I probably heard that song about 25 times. Again, it was a one-way trip. I mean, wherever we were going, I went. I think my friend and I were going somewhere. And I don't think I ever saw her, the woman, or the son ever again. Uh, but it was a song that was kind of etched in my mind. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we, here we go. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's just a song that, that I remember very, very vividly back then. But the notion is, when Jesus is talking about the Great Commission, he's not saying, I'm going to go into the world and preach the gospel. He said, you go into the world and preach the gospel. And by the way, I will be with you always, even until the end of the age. So it's a Great Commission, yes, but the Lord is letting us know that even as we go in his name, he will be right there with us. So it, it is, in many respects, him saying to us, as you do this thing, hey, hey, look, here we go. Let's go. Here we go. Here we go. Go out into the nations. That's the part of the Great Commission. It's not just us doing it by ourselves. It's the Lord who is with us as we go. Let's read the scripture again. Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. Matthew 28, verses 18, 18 through 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. I have three points today. First point is sacrifice of Christ. First point is sacrifice of Christ. 
So we know in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus was struggling, was wrestling. You know, he had been born of a virgin. He was preaching the gospel. He had disciples. He was going around and teaching and healing and feeding the people. And, and, and really just making sense of the word of God. Just really starting something. Start, things were starting to get going in the community. He was fulfilling God's God's will for his life on the earth. But when he, when he comes to the garden, he, he's got to make a choice. Part of God's mission for him, part of the thing that he came to do was not just to teach, not just to preach, not just to do miracles, not just to feed people, but he also came to die. So, so he came to be the sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice for all of humanity. And this is something he struggled with because he knew how difficult that process would be. You know, the, 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 the passion of the Christ talks, you know, shows this, this period from the Garden of Gethsemane to the cross, to the crucifixion. And it was agony for him. It was agony to just to think about what he had to go through. And when he had to go through it, all he had, all he went through was, was, was physical pain and, and humiliation, falsely arrested, falsely charged falsely convicted, beaten up all over his body, ridiculed by people on the highest levels of their society and of the lowest levels of the society, ridiculed by all, diminished by all, berated by these soldiers, humiliated by these soldiers, and then the ultimate sacrifice, dying on the cross. But, but that's part of it. The first part was his life. The second part was his the passion and his death. But the third part was his resurrection. So resurrection is also part of it. So when he rose from the dead and he appeared to his disciples and spoke to them and met with them and comforted them and sort of, you know, got them ready. This is his great commission. This is what these are part of his last words to them. This is what he says to them before he's taken up into heaven. These are his last commands, his commission. That's why they call it the Great Commission. Go into all the world and preach the gospel, right? Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And lo, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the earth. Oh, I forgot. The Greek word for power means ability, force, or capacity. The Old Testament is written in, in Hebrew, New Testament is written in Greek. The Greek word for power means ability, force, or capacity. And the Greek word for teach means disciple or to become a pupil or to enroll them as scholars or to make them learners. So the Greek word for teach means disciple or to become a pupil or to enroll them as scholars or make them learners. So, so this, is, this is the thing that the Lord wants us to do. He wants us to go into all the world, but, but none of this could happen. None of this could happen unless Christ first sacrificed his life on the cross. But, but notice what it does not say. And some, some translation says, all authority has been given unto me. And, you know, authority would be great. Because, you know, the devil, you know, without, it's a long theological discussion when Adam and Eve sinned. They turn over the authority of the world, the earth, to the devil. Satan has authority over the earth. Again, it's a long theological discussion. So it would make sense that after the resurrection of Christ, now all the authority would be somehow transferred over to Jesus. That's not what this word means. This word means power. Doesn't mean um, doesn't mean authority. It means ability. It, it means the force or capacity. So it's it's something that he now has the power or the force to take back the authority. When I say take back, I mean the spiritual authority that the devil has. He has the ability to do that. He has the capacity to do that. But how it's done is done through the body of Christ. It would be great if he could just say, in the name of Jesus, we now have authority. No, what he wants us to do is it's one step at a time. You know, you go out, and you get converts. You go out and you make disciples of, of people. So as you, in, so in your life, in your body, in your mind, in your situation, you have given your authority 
over to Christ because you have now rejected the authority of the world and of Satan. Again, the, those are two actually separate concepts, the world and Satan are two different concepts, but you have rejected the world and you rejected the authority of Satan in your life, in your personal life, when you get Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. That has nothing to do with the guy across the street. It doesn't even have anything to do with your family member, but in your life, you have now given authority of Christ in your life. So it's not authority in general. It's not like when the resurrection comes and all of a sudden every single person now, every single person is now a Christian. Every single person is now a believer. Every single person operates in the authority of Christ. No. He said power and ability. That's what I have. And I transfer. And, and as you go out, I am going with you. So, so the authority of Satan is broken over the life of every believer. And over time, the authority of the world and world system should be broken over the life of every believer, although that takes time. So the, the, the rule of Satan over your life goes away instantly upon your salvation. And through the course of your life and sanctification and doing the right thing, the influence of the world system is also diminished over time in your life. You become more and more like Christ. So that's how it works. It's not like Jesus rose from the dead and all of a sudden everybody is Christian, everybody does it the right way. No, no. You may do it the right way as you get saved. I mean, you are now, you are now, you now belong to God in the spirit. But and 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 your ways over time will get better. But but it's not like as soon as Jesus rose from the dead, all the problems of the world are gone. No. It, it, the, the point is that what he was trying to do was saying, in your life, I now have authority. And, and the power that I have, the ability that I have, is now transferred to you so you can go out and make disciples of other people so that us together, one by one, we could take back the authority that Satan has over this world. And we could take back the influence the world system has on, on everybody in this community, in the world. That's what it is. That's why the sacrifice of Christ gave him the power and the ability and the capacity to change humanity. And when we accept him as Lord and Savior, we ourselves are changed. And also we are empowered to go out and change the world one person at a time. Point two, learners. Now, there's this phrase that people are using now, I'm a learner, I'm a learner. I'm a learner. It's, it's, you know, it's an interesting term, but it's not an original term because the term disciple means a, a student, a pupil, uh, to enroll them, as, it means a scholar. It means, it means a learner. So, so, it's kind of weird. Disciple means somebody who's basically a lifelong student. But instead of learning, in, you know, at some university or some college or some high school, you decided to become a lifelong learner of the ways of Christ. You're, you're, you're like Mary. You're sitting at the feet of Christ, kind of drinking it all in, listening to what he has to say. Right. Drinking it all in, living, you know, Take it in all that he has to say. The 12 were first called disciples, later called apostles, the sent ones. But they are still disciples. They're the ones who are constantly learning from Christ. Peter, Peter evolved over time. Right? These, these guys didn't just stay where they were. They were always learning. They were lifelong learners. So even when Jesus was taken up into heaven, right? Even when Jesus was taken up into heaven, they were still learning. And you can see that in Peter. You can see that in the book of Acts. He, he, Peter evolved. He wasn't just stuck in his ways. Oh, this is the way. No, Lord. I've never eaten anything on pure. No, Lord. And no. He was listening. He ultimately listened to the words of God. And because of that, he evolved. And, and, and that's what a disciple means. This process of, of, of making disciples of nations. I mean, it's, it doesn't just stop with preaching. You know, you preach or people preach or you witness, witness and preaching, same thing. You have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody and they get saved. 
or somebody listen to a sermon, any sermon that any preacher preaches and they get saved. That is not the end of the process. That just makes them a convert. It doesn't make them a disciple. A disciple is somebody who's open to living a life of learning under Christ. A disciple is somebody who's willing to live a life, who's willing to live or dedicate his life to continue to learn from Christ. It's, it's different than a convert. A convert is one moment in time. I accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I am now converted from death into life. Now the authority of, my, of Satan is taken off of my life. And now the authority of Jesus is in my life. That's all that means. But, it, but in order to become a disciple, that person has to be willing to have an open heart to hear from God and to learn from God on a continual basis. You're not just stuck in day one of your conversion. They're not just stuck in week one of their conversion. They're not just stuck in year one of their conversion. They, they should be, and you should encourage them and make them to be lifelong learners. We want them, we want that new convert to be open to the word of God and the ways of God all of their life because they're not going to always get it right. He didn't say go make perfect people. He didn't say go make people just like me who are without sin. No, he didn't say that. He didn't say go make perfect people because you're not perfect. And the people that can get converted because you talk to them, the people that get converted because you preach to them, they're not perfect. Nor will they ever be perfect. Nor will you ever be perfect. That's not what he requires. What he requires from them to become disciples is to be lifelong learners. Those who are willing to become pupils and students of the ways of Christ. Point three, you will be with us. So this song, you know, that I listened to, I mean, I, I told you I used to listen to a lot of rap music. A lot growing up. I mean, I, 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 I'm old enough to remember the first rap records and, and all that other stuff. And I remember all the groups, all the groups. Um, yeah, of course, I don't do that anymore. But, you know, this, this, you know, one of the things about this kind of music can be quite infectious. You get a song in your head and you're like 20 years later, you hear somebody playing it. I, like, I don't even play that stuff in my car. But if you hear somebody else playing it in their car or somebody next to you on the train with those little portable radios now, they don't even use headset. They just use these little Radio's about this big, it's as loud as ever. So you hear that on the train, you hear somebody driving in their car, you hear the same song, and it's like you remember. It's like it puts you back to where you were. It puts you back to where you were when you first heard that song. And and if I hear that song, if I hear somebody playing it, it puts me back to being right back in my car, <laughs> driving away from campus, I don't remember where, and to that dude playing, that song cassette in his car about 20 times. And the thing is, you know, back then you didn't even get tired of it. It's like, you know, don't you have any other songs? No, he didn't. I don't, for one reason, he didn't have any other songs. And my radio in the car wasn't that great. I just had like AM radio. I don't even think I had FM radio in that car. I was so old. So we were, you know, we had conversation, of course, but if there's any music to be played, we're captive to this guy's music. But, you know, we didn't get tired of it. You know, as many times as we heard it, and, you know, you kind of get annoyed, but, you know, you get annoyed when, when you first hear it. But then the music starts, then you really get into it. Like, here we go, here we go, here we go. And, and that, that's kind of how it is for the Great Commission. You know, you hear this word, about going out from Jesus, making disciples, making lifelong learners of people that you witness to, lifelong learners of the people you preach to. You hear that, and sometimes it could be kind of annoying. I mean, who really, I mean, you know, you're saved and, you, you know, you, you yourself are no longer a convert. You have become a lifelong learner because you go to church every week, you go to Bible study every week, you go to prayer meetings on a regular basis. Right? You have your own personal study with God. You got your own 
group of Christian friends that you go out with and you all hang out, you all go to Buffalo Wild Wings, you go on vacations together. You know, you have your little clique. You have your your whole Christian life all all there. I mean, you got it. It's a, it could become very comforting and very comfortable. So the last thing people want to talk about or really think about is going out and making disciples of my neighbors, my coworkers, or just complete strangers. That's the last thing anybody wants to talk. It's it's annoying. But but like that song, what happens is once you start doing it, you start going out there, you start reaching out, it becomes infectious. It becomes like addictive. It becomes like you you, you got to do it. It becomes wow. It becomes like this little joy that comes on. You listen to that, you know, kid kept playing that music over and over again. You played it oh, what, again. And then a minute into it, you're like, yeah. I really like this song. And that, that's how it is. All, all it takes, body of Christ, is that first step. I know things are good with you. You know, your prayer life is good. Your friends situation is good. Your church situation, you're good. You go, you hang out, take on vacations. You take a couple of Christian friend, first friends with you. You're good. That's a good life. You go to Buffalo Wild Wings, you watch the Super Bowl together, you do barbecue together. I mean, not, not everybody say, but you got your core group. And that's the way the Lord wants you to live. That's the way the Lord wants you to be. But but this also, but there's this other thing. Because the only reason you're saved is because somebody else listened to the Great Commission. You heard somebody preach to you and you got saved. You had somebody witness to you. That's how you got saved. You were watching on television somebody preaching. You got saved. You were reading a book somehow, and then you get saved. So, so then you were listening to the radio, and then you got saved. So, so there's somebody, someone, some person or some group of persons decided to go out and do outreach, and in the process of doing outreach, you got saved. Wow. So this thing that you're doing now, this great life that you have, is a result of some person, some church, some community deciding to really to heed the voice of God, to press that play button on that radio, to go out and reach. So now you, you saved by God, you blessed by God, you protected by God, you saved by God, you blessed by God, you protected by God. Now Jesus is saying to you, now you go and make learners of all men. He's saying, and, and, and not, not only is he saying that, he says, lo, I will be with you. You won't be going by yourself. Yes, you'll be going with other people in your community. Yes, you'll be sent and trained by other people in your church community. But even as you go to that door, even as you go to that car, even as you go to the people standing over there in that corner, even as you talk to somebody on the phone or send that email, he says, I will be with you. Always. I, Jesus, will be with you always, even until the end of the age. So what he's saying is, what he's really saying is, here we go. Yeah, he's telling you to go, but what he's saying, if you read the whole scripture, is here we go. He's saying, here we go. And that, my friend, can be very infectious. Once we have to take, once we take the first step. Once you take the first step, you'll find yourself wanting to do it in the future. That's it. You today never accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life. Never accepted him as Lord and Savior of your life. If that's you, pray this prayer after me. Lord, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me my sins. I know you came for me. I know you lived for me. I know you died for me. And on the third day, you rose again from the dead. Today I confess that you are Lord. I believe in my heart that you rose from the dead. Therefore, today I'm saved. My name is Marlon Curtin. This is the Rockwood Cathedral. Building God's kingdom in you. Go in victory. Go in peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you for your love and faithfulness. We praise you for your awesome power and majesty. Thank you for your victory on the cross. You did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Empower us with a spirit of boldness 
so that we can go forth and follow your commands. Thank you for this authority that you have given us. Forgive us when we falter. We want to please and serve you all the days of our lives. We pray this prayer in the name of your precious Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks for worshiping with us today. We pray that you are blessed by the word brought to us today by Pastor Marlon Curtin. Go in God's grace until we meet again for Sunday service and Tuesdays for Bible study from 7.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Be sure to check out our website for more information about our ministry. God bless you. And remember, you're dismissed from this service, but never dismissed from God's presence.